Good morning everybody, Victor here from beautiful Jupiter, Florida. I'm on my good buddy Adam's boat for moving weight fishing. What's Not, going on? Got my good buddy Stanley in town. What's going on guys? From the Navy, he's on leave, so we're gonna head out of Jupiter Inlet. We're gonna try to get on some fish. So we're doing one of my favorite things ever in terms of a fishing style. You guys have seen it on the channel before, called triple hooking. And all it is is three hooks in line right here. And we're gonna use this. This is a deadly technique we use down here in South Florida while commercial king fishing, but you could catch a bunch of species doing it. Now you might wonder how you get these hooks to look like that. I'm gonna show you real quick. Adam's got a secret patented method that I'm about to share with you guys. You come over here, you gotta get your hooks. You gotta put one hook in one eye. You put it right here on the door and you gotta use something like a pair of pliers or crimpers. You smack it on there. Don't ask me why, but this is the best way to get your hooks through the eye without anything straightening. And the barb you guys can see is still perfect. So I'm gonna work on these rigs. Adam's getting the Sabikis rigged up. We'll see you guys out there. Made it out of Jupiter Inlet, and first things first, any good fishing day starts with the bait. Adam, is sardine your favorite bait? It's not only my favorite bait, it's the best bait. I Adam has a sardine necklace. I lost wears. it, dude. What? Got caught in a cast net, I lost it. How many people do you know that have a sardine necklace around their neck? You gotta stay silent. Can't let anyone know about the bite. Let's see. Oh, there's some sardines. Yeah. I'm gonna start at the tower. That is what we like to see right there. Best bait fish in the world. Spanish sardines. We try to get a full stringer, but if you could pick off three, four, five at a time, not bad either. And then this guy right here, this is a cigar minnow. Kingfish eat them. Um, they don't work as good as a sardine, but they still work. For those of you guys at home who don't know, it's called a sabiki rig. What we do is we actually tie two together. You see that they're connected right there in the middle. And all it is, it's essentially mimics like a little fly. So sardines and little bait fish, they eat little plankton, little baby fish, and that's all that's mimicking and you have them in sequence. So sometimes we'll catch however many hooks we have on our line. Sometimes we'll catch 10 in a row. Holy predator. Yeah. So when you guys hear us say predator, see how I'm missing two hooks right there? Jacks, bonitas, kingfish come by and they'll just snatch the bait right off of your hook. Oh yeah, I'm bit. I'm bit good. Now the trick is getting them in before predators do. Oh, I'm strong, Adam. Oh yeah, boys. That's what you like to see. Look, 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 Danny. Film that sardine right here next to the boat. He's gonna get blown out of the water. He's right behind Stan. See him? <laughs> yeah. I <see. laughs> oh my gosh. Just look at how clean they are. They're like the bougiest bait fish. What are you guys gonna catch today? Uh, we're going commercial king fishing. Nice. Matt's got a permit. Yeah. What about you guys? Trying to get tuna. Yeah. Sales. They're out there. We got some subscribers on the other boat. Recognize moving weight in land shark. If you guys ever see us out on the water. Don't be shy and say hi. I love when people say hi. A lot of people are actually, I don't know if they think that like Adam and I or Brooke bite or something, but we get a lot of DMs after like an encounter and they'll be like, oh, we saw you, but we were too afraid to say hi. I love seeing you guys and I love saying hi to you. Bait fishing has been super tough this morning. Most of the boats already went fishing. We kind of got a late start this morning. I think we got a hundred baits in the well. I think we got plenty. Adam doesn't want to leave here until we have 10,000 as usual. We have no bait. <laughs> For him, unless we have 500, unless you cannot see the bottom, we have no bait. Typical Jupiter bait guy, but we're gonna just keep plucking along here, hopefully get 50 more baits, and we'll see you guys offshore. I think you know you're here at the spot when you see 50 other commercial boats around us. So we just moved out to like 100, 130 feet of water. Stanley's never done this before. And uh, he only had one day in town. So I said, you want to go commercial fishing? He said, heck yeah. So I'm going to walk you guys through at the same time I walk Stanley through. Oh, last hook, 
through the throat. Okay, so if you look at this, when I throw this sardine out, those hooks kind of act as your leader. We're fishing for kingfish, which have a lot of teeth, no wire, and I'm gonna keep my line as tight as possible when I fish this sardine. And I want them to swim down. I'm gonna cast my sardine out away from the boat. And the whole thing with this is, you want constant tension in your line. You don't want it to be loose, because if it's loose, you're gonna get cut off. And when bait fish feel tension, they swim away from that tension. If you get loose on them, they're not gonna swim away, they're not gonna swim down. Ideally, I want my sardine to swim as deep as possible because that's where the fish are. The kingfish aren't right on the surface usually. They're usually like 20, 30, 50 feet down. Also, when I'm down there, a lot of times you'll see me and Adam will kind of do this with our rod. Like you'll jig the tip because you want to like, you want to wake up your sardine every, you know, now and then. And I think that when that sardine flickers down there and they see all those hooks shine, it really entices a bite as well. You don't want your sardine just sitting there. You, you want to actively fish your bait the whole time. You either want them swimming away from you, flashing, doing something. You don't want it to just be like this. Remember how to do this? Yes, sir. A lot of sharks, Stanley. Is that a He's cobia? got a 20 plus pound fish on, dude. Is that a cobia? It's a big king. Oh, it's a big king. You got the gap? Where is the gap? Adam's on too. It's underneath the gunnel. Vic, you look like you're about to grab the leader. Vic, give me the gap. What? Oh, Mike's foul hook. Give me the gap. Give me the gap. And listen here, before anyone complains about the bad gaff shots, I'm telling you right now, you gaff them when you can and where you can. The market takes them regardless where you gaff them. I'm telling you that right now. Head, tail, you just gotta get them in the boat. That's the most important thing with this type of fishing. And you guys will see a lot of the times we'll just leave the fish flopping on the deck because when you're in the fish, you wanna catch as many as possible until you're out of them. And then when you're out of them and you go to redrift, that's when you put your fish in the box. They'll be fine on the deck for 10 minutes. <laughs> there is no better feeling than getting hit on the triple hook. You feel your sardine rushing out there. Kingfish smokes it. These things are so fast and strong. I got a dink. This is a flipper right here. We pretty much fish lock drag. There we go. So fish that size, like I'd say under 12 pounds, we try to flip them in the boat. Because most of the time they're hooked good. You can see that he's got pretty much all three hooks inside of them. Uh, yeah. Most important thing to have on the boat when you're doing this, a good de-hooker. You guys see they got uh, quite a gnarly set of teeth. I'd say they're biting, boys. Oh, you guys. Yeah, I'm going to read. God dang it. Oh my gosh, right there. That's what we're after right there. Florida kingfish. This is about the average size. Um, Stanley's first fish, that's a nice fish. Usually when you get into them, they're, they're usually the similar size in the school. So like if you get into school of 10 to you know 20 pounders they're all kind of in that size you have afternoons sometimes where it's like all 30 plus pound fish but get a load of those teeth right there earlier this year i hired a cameraman named dennis to this date it's the biggest investment i made for my business i love what i do being able to travel fish and make videos for you guys but like any business, tracking expenses is crucial. And that's where today's video sponsor comes in, Rocket Money. As you guys may have noticed, I lost my voice, so it would mean the world to me if you like this video and listen to what I have to say about this really cool app, Rocket Money. Rocket Money is an all-in-one personal finance platform that helps you save more and spend less. One of my favorite things about Rocket Money is it helps me set up budgets, which you guys can imagine is super helpful, especially for all the big trips we go on. Let's be real, most of us, including myself, have 
old subscriptions we've forgotten about, but Rocket Money helps you cancel unwanted subscriptions safely and securely. My number one favorite thing about this app is that it's an all-in-one finance platform. I can see my personal, business, and investment finances in one centralized location, giving me a clear picture of my net worth. As life and business just gets crazier and crazier, Rocket Money helps me run my business in an efficient and organized manner, and I love that about this app. Download Rocket Money and unlock more features with premium. Go to rocketmoney.com slash landsharkoutdoors or click the link in the video description. Big thank you once again to Rocket Money for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get back to fishing. This is what we don't want, but Adam can still sell these. And I don't know if I've mentioned it in the video yet, but we are commercial fishing. So you're gonna see us keep more than the recreational limit. In Florida, two kingfish per person per day. On this boat, Adam, what is it, 75 or 50? 75. He's allowed 75 kingfish. He's got a special permit that you gotta apply for with the state. Bonitas though, these guys are unregulated, 100 pounds or two fish per person, whichever is greater. How much line do you think I can fill that snoopy up with? Oh. What the hell? You guys might wonder, if we can only keep 75 fish, why do you need 500 baits? A lot of times your sardine doesn't swim, right? We go through a lot of baits. If your sardine is not doing what you want it to, bust them off, put a new one on, or you'll just get picked off. You'll get trigger fish to eat it. You want to come out here with way more baits than you think you need. You know, I, I commercial fish every day. I don't have a charter. If I have a charter, I'm, I'm charter fishing. And, and honestly, I, I enjoy doing that a lot more, you know? But uh, if I'm not charter fishing, I'm commercial fishing. and. I just want to fish for a living every day. So, so, that's all I want to do. You're fishing lock drag because you're trying to get them in the boat as fast as possible. And when you have these three hooks, you don't really pull the hook. So it's like the most intense first 10 seconds when you hook up to these things. Right. Triple header, boys. I mean, how can you not like this? Adam was saying it. Anything that involves being able to be out on the water every single day or fish every day, sign me up for, man. Ready? Mm -hmm. Right next to you, guys. Coming behind you, Daddy. Coming over you, Vic. Watch out, flipping this fish. Yeah, boy. Don't throw the head back in the water yet. I can tell you one thing he hates about king fishing is that right there. Unfortunately, this area has tons and tons of sharks, and these sharks have learned to basically just sit underneath these boats and they get a free meal. Uh, some days it's really bad to the point where you're landing like one out of every four fish you're hooking. It's really unfortunate. A lot of sharks out here. The problem with the sharks is not only do you lose the fish that you hook, but they also shut off the bite. Who wants to eat when there's a shark chasing you? See how much line Adam's bait is pulling off the spool? That's what you want. You want as much commotion and vibration. Oh, you missed him. Oh, scrap eater. A little scrap action. Stanley Steam Puppy? Bro, he just followed your fish up. I know, I saw that. Smoke you. Alright, watch out, Stanley. I'm gonna flip this fish right here. Damn, this little, this little guy's throwing down. He's like, you're worried about my performance. I think you missed three in a row. Sorry, Danny. I don't think I'm flipping this one. No, bring him, bring him right to me. Big girls in the boat. It's a nice fish there, Denny. Denny. Letting that rat rove you around. There it is. There's something about the sound of mono running through your guides. Special. 
Hey, I'll tell you what, Vic, good call on the spare change of clothes. Uh -huh. uh, we're going to be wrecked after this. Did I not tell you they were going to bite, Vic? They're biting. Little They're fish. biting. I'm a little fish. <laughs> Sorry, Dennis. <laughs> Dennis was just saying, I'm sure your customers would love to come out here and do this. So if you guys want to do this, you can. You can't keep 75 fish, but you can keep your recreational limit if you book a charter, which is yes. two per person. But it's like, still this, fun to see. This method of fishing is insane, and you don't just catch kingfish. We haven't caught anything else yet, but you catch cobia, sailfish, tunas, and a, believe it or not, a lot of mutton snapper. We just reset our drift. We got in the mix of a lot of boats and we, we, we were getting trolled on there. So we wanted to run south, get out of the boats a little bit, just started marking some fish. I'm firing a fresh one down. And uh, hold on, hold on, Daddy Bird. Ru Blue Runner? What in the Tom Swanker is this? And it, that's a nice king bait. Too bad the kingfish are small today, otherwise, I'd fire them down. Hope we get enough footage that Denny can fish. Man, these are small fish. Very small. But we'll take them. Oh, sorry if I'm being silent, you guys. I'm trying to conserve my energy here. See if I can go three for three here while my crew's sleeping. Kingfish guide right there. While my crew's sleeping. Very standardly. It's so important, you gotta get your sardine to swim down there. If it's not swimming down there, it's not getting bit. You need to swim down 20, 30 feet, that's it. Oh yeah. Stanley, Stanley. What do we got, Vic? You're on. You gonna walk back there? No. No? It's long as I don't know, man. This Torium seems to be a little faster than that time. Really? I, I, I just caught four in the time you caught one. Yeah. That flick was atrocious. Danny, you got a gaffer? Bring, bring him over here, old gaffer. Bring him right here. Flip that thing. Oh, it's a nice fish. Bring him right here, Stanley Steamer. Steam puppy. Steam pup, Stanley. Grab that. Victor actually has ruined my dopamine sensors when it comes to fishing. Because every time I come out, it's just an epic day. Oh yeah, you got the gas? Nice king. Yeah. That's, that's another big one, man. That's, that's the third He's biggest definitely one. catching a nice one. Third biggest king What's right the there. secret, Stanley? I like to speak to the sardines in a very nice way, and they like to treat me well. Oh, there's one. Oh, that might be a mutton, bro. Wow, that was like on bottom, bro. It's a shark. Shark ate my Dean. I don't know. I'm getting big head shakes like Kobe, and I was swimming up, but then he, bro, he's turning now. Bro, those are aggressive head shakes. No, he let go of my fish. He let go of my fish. That's why. Oh, the big king, bro. Jeez, Louise, look at that thing. That thing got shark instantly. That was a 20 pound king. Yeah. All Damn. Back. We saw the shark come up like 15 feet underneath the boat, and that's all I got back. Are Sharks you? not endangered off of Jupiter, Florida. Oh, into the sky. There he is. Yeah, that thing was tiny. Whew. That actually happens quite often. You know, it looks like, why the heck would a mutton eat a triple hook and a sardine in the midwater calm? Sometimes on the surf. Kingfish just skied that bait right there. Oh, that's a bonita, what in the a lot of times the muttons will sing and sit in those kingfish schools.
because the kingfish are cutting baits in half and then the bait starts sinking and a mutton comes up and eats it. And uh, they'll, they'll be on the surface in a kingfish school. It happens quite often. You catch a lot of big fish like that too. That's a small one. But I had some fish from yesterday that we caught like that. And I'm going to give Vic one to take home and have some dinner with the family. Vic holding the camera. You don't see this. Here, get him. Oh, <gasps> yeah! Denny! Yeah. I need to get off the Den platform up here. <laughs> Denny! Yeah. Dennis, when is, the la when is the last time you remember <laughs> catching a fish? It's been over a month. A month. Easily. Two months. That's not nice. Oh, he's coming on the top. You know, Dennis works hard as a cameraman. He needs to have some fun too once in a while. <laughs> Woo! And there's nothing more fun than this. That's a flipper. You know, I saw. I saw this video from uh, from you guys a long time ago, and uh, I was really jealous of this trip. There it is. Nice. Woo! Yeah, how, big, how big is this? I mean, I can. Nice guy. Yeah. First shot. That's a big one. Decent. Twenty-five, twenty-six. One, the one on the deck. Yeah, that's twenty-six. Yeah. So right. twenty-six kingfish total. Now what Adam's doing is, these fish are all going to a fish market, right? So he's gonna bring them to something that the commercial guys call a slab, where you go in and you weigh your fish, uh, they write you a little ticket, and then eventually you get paid based on what the uh, market price of the fish is. But he's gutting them right now, and that is the only way that the market will take these fish, right Adam? Yeah, you gotta gut them. Otherwise, I mean, sometimes these fish are stored, you know, a couple weeks at a time, and. And who wants to fish with guts in them when they're being stored? So I come in right here, make a little slit, sit four inch slit, stick my hand in. You don't want to grab any of the row or the sperm. Cut that back piece, kind of gutting them backwards here. I'll show you. Cut the front piece and that's it. So you're really just removing the stomach, huh? Yeah, just the stomach. Fish prices have been high all around. You know, mutton snapper right now is 750, which is crazy high. Kingfish a few weeks ago was 540, which is crazy high. But it's not like that all the time, you guys. It you know fluctuates all the time. Sometimes it drops down to two dollars a pound. But the only way you're gonna find out is if you go and make a paycheck. And then, yep. All you can do is try. You know, you got to be out here to make it happen. It's it's supply and demand. Supply goes up. The market gets flooded with kingfish, demand goes down. Supply is low, demand goes up, prices go high. Just like with anything, with computers, with phones, fish are the exact same way too. So since commercial fishing gets such a bad rap, what I like to kind of teach people is the fact that commercial fishing, unlike recreational fishing, every single thing is accounted for. So when a recreational go guy goes out, the state doesn't really know how many kingfish are caught by all the recreational fishermen. The state knows exactly how many kingfish were brought in by commercial fishermen and they are physically not allowed to keep more than their limit. Adam cannot go to the market and bring them 80 kingfish because the market will actually get in trouble and they're not going to write him a ticket. He's not going to write him a pay slip. So every single pound is accounted for and the way regulations in our state are made is through biologists, scientists, and then also they see the quota. So they'll set, let's say, a hundred ton quota or a thousand ton quota. If that quota is met, before the end of the season, they'll shut certain fisheries down. But I don't think they ever really shut kingfish down, do they, Adam? And it's Not always around here. It's always been 75 fish a person. Sometimes it goes to 50. Sometimes it goes to 100. Okay. It just depends. But right now it's 75. So they'll adjust the quota based on the amount of fish you can keep. Yeah. I think if it was always at 50, the price would always stay high, and uh, everyone would be happy because you get to catch less fish. It's easier on your day. It's easier on your workload and the price is high, so it evens out for your 75 if the price was lower. So that's my take on it. So although we didn't get any legal muttons to bring home for dinner, since Adam is such a good friend, this is a mutton that he caught the night before king fishing. And uh, like he was saying, they do get quite a few muttons king fishing. Normally muttons are a bottom fish, but you got to think when we're throwing in all those sardines and a kingfish comes up and slices that sardine in half and all the scales in commotion, even bottom fish like a mutton is going to come up to try to investigate and they're going to, you know, go in and on that feeding frenzy. So they do get quite a few mutton snapper and you're probably wondering why aren't you guys eating the kingfish? Just didn't really feel like it. Um, 
really had snapper on the mind for dinner. Gonna make it for me, Dennis, Brooke, and Stanley. Throw some steak on the grill and have a nice little snapper on the half shell. Look at that gorgeous meat. And so the knife I'm using today, this is an eight inch Dexter flexible filet. You guys can actually save 20% off all Dexter knives. Use my code Landshark. And as you see, it's not all talk. There's the walk right there. Beautiful knives make easy work of fish. They stay sharp for a long time. And my favorite part is they're made in the USA and they've been made in the USA for a long time. But this is pretty much all we have to do with the mutton aside from removing the pin bones. So I'm gonna cook this just like so, put some seasoning on it and throw it right on the camp chef. But I'm gonna remove these pin bones. I'm gonna go on both sides of it and I'm not gonna cut through the skin. I'm gonna just kind of tilt my knife along that way and get those pin bones out and voila and we got snapper for dinner so i'll see you guys there first of all this is my really good friend stanley who you guys saw on the boat what's going on guys and funny story if it wasn't for stanley me and brooke would have never met he's actually the matchmaker who set brooke and i up because he knew brooke as a friend through mutual friends they used to go diving together so shout out to stanley because here we are 11 years later still friends and I got the love of my life back there. This guy has killed and caught a lot of fish in his day, but he's one of those strange people that loves to fish and dive, but doesn't like seafood like at all. So we're gonna give, give this guy some nice steaks for dinner alongside our mutton snapper. Skirt steak, mutton snapper, but I'm gonna make a really delicious marinade first. Kind of like a chimichurri salsa type sauce. So in here I got equal parts cilantro, parsley, like four or five big cloves of garlic, an entire shallot, salt, pepper, olive oil, a little honey, a little Worcestershire, and a ton of olive oil, probably like a quarter cup to half a cup of olive oil. We're gonna do a little more, I don't even think I told you guys, there's also lime juice in here. I'm gonna put the skirt steaks in here, put a little bit of the marinade in there. Well, I want to have enough to put on top of the mutton snapper that we're going to bake on the half shell. So and now basically just kind of massage this through, put a little bit more olive oil in here and just let it marinate. Soy sauce, soy sauce and beef always go together. Okay, mutton snapper, look at that. And I'm not rinsing this at all. No fresh water. Once again, fresh water, saltwater fish, big, big no, no. I would rather have the blood of that fish still on there than rinse it off. If anything, use a paper towel. Salt in a generous amount because I'm only seasoning one side since the other side is the scaly and skin side. Pepper. Garlic. This alone, thrown on the grill on the half shell would be amazing, but we're gonna spruce it up a little bit. So I got up this little silicone brush and we're gonna just Brush this onto our mutton snapper. Look at how just pretty that is immediately too. That's why I went on with the dry seasonings first as well. Just kind of lather that on there. So this is just gonna sit out just like the steak. Let it kind of come to room temperature. And I said, Dennis, what should we make as a side dish tonight? I'm gonna challenge myself, make something I've never made before, tostones. Stanley suspect on the sisters. I love working with new food you've never worked with before, you know? It's it's like a banana, just a really hard, starchy banana. So this is a green plantain, and tostones is the I don't want to say the process, but like the method of cooking it. So when you get a really yellow green, when you get a really yellow plantain, it's like the sweet plantain, right? The sugars have had time to caramelize but these are gonna be a little bit more savory and salty. Mm, you can kind of smell those sugars already caramelizing, huh? And you guys know, I'm cooking on my favorite thing ever. Listen, if you wanna elevate your home cooking game, let me show you something real quick. This is not an ad. I just genuinely love this grill. You can cook steaks on this thing, which you guys are gonna see in a second here. You got gas, you got wood pellets, so you can smoke 
I smoked briskets on this thing, pork butts, um, burnt ends, all different types of things, smoked fish dip, and you got a side burner right here on the side. You don't want to stink up your house or you want to make some badass side dishes, you got the side burner right here, which comes in so handy. Oh yeah, look at that. Smash it like a kind of like a pancake. And now you guys can kind of picture this. It's softened up enough to smash, and now we're gonna be able to fry it. So you get more surface area, and surface area with any type of fried food, the crispier things get. We got them all flattened out, and now we're just gonna go back into the oil, give them one last fry, increase that surface area. They smell so good already. Okay, what's the number one rule when you fry food? Come on, Dennis, what is it? What is it? You just caught me off guard. Come on. You gotta salt hit them. it. Oh. Salt them. <laughs> when that oil is still hot, you gotta salt them so it adheres to the food. I know Brick's dad is jealous right now. Sorry, Brian, I wish we had more fish to feed you and the fam. I know this is your favorite. So we're gonna go in with the mutton snapper. Shell side down, so skin side down. That'll probably cook, I want to say, for like 10 minutes. We're mm. frying things. It's delicious. It's so delicious. See how you got Charlie, it's very hot, but it's so delicious. That's good. It's, it's good, good, isn't it? Yeah. All right. It's coming from the pickiest eater in the world. Yeah. You want to talk about macaroni and cheese and chicken tenders for breakfast, lunch, and dinner? It's this guy right here. Lunch I still love them, though. Yeah. Corn dogs, hot dogs, <laughs> the spectrum. Tostones, where's that? Come on, man, look at that mutton snapper. Look at that. So good. But I must say, if I had a choice, if the genie in a bottle came to me today and said, you can make every single fish in the ocean taste like a steak, I wouldn't hesitate for a second. I, I love, love, love red meat. There's something special about red meat. Shellfish, on the other hand, I think shellfish is the king of all seafood. Lobster, shrimp, scallops. That's where my heart's really at. So we're gonna go on with our skirt steak with that marinade, real, real high heat. You wanna sear it? In half, huh? It's a long piece of steak. Oh my gosh, you guys ready for this? Look at the color. That's what you want. Some nice grill marks, get a little sear on that skirt steak. All that flavor, that cilantro, the parsley, garlic, shallot. Listen, I don't know anyone who is having more fun than us on a Tuesday right now. I got one of my best buds from the Navy in town. Brookie, Dennis. We had a ton of fun with Adam today, and now we're eating like kings right here. It does not get better than that. Okay, steak is done. Look at how flaky, oh my gosh, that is how flaky it is. I could barely even take it off. Turn the grill off. Put it onto our sheet pan right there. Flaky as can be. Gorgeous color on it. I know that marinade is going to be super flavorful. Watch this. This is what I love about cooking fish on the half shell. It's nature's basically casserole dish where you can just take it right off of the uh, skin and scales. I'm telling you, Fish tastes so much better because it's just so dang moist when you take it off of this. Nice pink in the middle right there. Uh-huh. Yeah, the testimonies are gone. Completely smoked. They were good. I had two. Yeah, this one. Might be one of my favorite fish dishes I've ever done. This, this is this is unreal. I have never had a flavor profile on a fish that tastes like this. What did you say it is? Cilantro, shallots, garlic, red wine vinegar, lime juice, salt, pepper. This, um, this is oil. The, the most different fish dish. Did you get this idea from South America when no. you were down there? Dude, this is banging. Like, this is the, one of the craziest fish dishes I've ever had. This is amazing. Let's get the joints to do. Yeah, this it's really is my good. New, uh, mini favorite. Holy cow. I'm gonna need to get this recipe from you. A favorite? Favorite. Is this the same marinade for the steak as well? Yes. How's um, the steak? I can't give you the fish opinion, but I know none of you're here for the steak, but it also works well on the steak. <laughs> if you thought mutton snapper couldn't get better, 
put this marinade on top of it and then it's just that much better. It's absolutely delicious. I wanna thank you guys so much for watching. I want Dennis to enjoy this while it's nice and hot. And uh, big shout out to Adam if you guys, a lot of you asked me if Brick and I charter, we don't. But Adam's a really good friend of ours and a killer, young, hungry captain that wants to put you on the fish. Make the drive to Jupiter and you will have the trip of a lifetime. I'll have all of his stuff linked below. Catch you guys in the next one. See ya.